everyone, and welcome here to another episode of Prep Phase powered by Predator. Uh, Milos is busy because he's recently engaged, so I assume he's celebrating in some manner. So instead, I've been put in the hot speed seat, joined, already messing up, by Demo. There he is. Close up. You can say hello, it's okay. Say hello. Oh, do I talk now? Yeah. Well, I, I thought I was here for looks, to be honest. No, that's why we've got Dez. Dez is here for the looks with his backwards cap. Like a cool, naughty schoolboy. How do you do, fellow kids? You need to start with <laughs> the young kid look whenever you're about Hell five. no. But it's not just us. Joining us wonderfully for this segment, we have all the way from the other side of the world, Super Onagiri. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm doing good. And we have, we have you on the big screen uh, behind us. We have you in. For those who might not know <laughs> who you are, could you please give us a quick rundown of what you do in the team you play for? Uh, okay, my name is Onikiri. I'm from Team Elevate. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm the team captain for the Elevate, but everyone might be curious that I'm the I'm not the IGL of the team, and no, we have no IGL in the team. To yeah, is that because <laughs> yeah. nobody nobody Thailand. wants to do it or just no? Like everyone been curious about this uh, IGL things in our team. You know, like, uh, we we feel like if Someday that actually I have a bad day and they make a bad decision. Uh, we're going to lose and then like we just vote, we just drawn out the setup of the enemy strats and we just vote uh, where, can we, where are we going to attack or where are we going to defend. Now it is also probably worth mentioning early on right now, for those who somehow don't know who Elevate are, they are a constant sort of team on the grandest stage, have been for a while when they can make it. But you've recently obviously had a spin around Berlin with two new players. Um, how have they sort of fitted into that idea of playing without an IGL, playing that dynamic? Uh, they they are okay with no IGL things because uh, you know uh, we feel like if it's a majority vote from the player in the team by the time that we're playing, and if it's turn out we lost the round, then we're not gonna regret it because it's a major majority vote from the team. And I guess there's a question around that. Um, yeah, Mark and Mr. Punch had a really good time at the Major, right, with oh, the way they yeah. were playing. Punch especially became my new shotgun hero. That's the kind of player he was. <laughs> what were you looking for when you brought these two into the team? What was the change you were looking to affect inside the roster? Was it to add more firepower? Was it more behind the scenes stuff? Like, why did you make those two changes specifically? Uh, okay, so we focus on discipline and like firepower, of course, and like Mark and Punch is like one of the best gunner in the Thailand by the time that we signed them. And we didn't regret that we make a change. And like everyone gonna be like, why you make the change? Your roster is already good or something like that after the SI. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's turned out great. <laughs> I don't regret it. It's strange, I guess, from my perspective to hear the player who set multiple kill records talking about needing more firepower. <laughs> <laughs> you are the firepower on a Giri. <laughs> No, no I, I don't know. Like, if if I'm the one that's setting a kill record, that, that means your team have a problem. <laughs> oh, okay, so, like that. so it's the other team that has, <laughs> that has the problem. To be fair, I do wonder about Elevate as well, Ornagiri, where imagine if you guys were, were at Charlotte as well, because obviously you guys didn't get a chance to go. And I just wonder, you know, how that event would have worked out for you guys. You know, would that have been a really good event? Would then maybe you've been stronger at Berlin? You know, I just think that there is like just so much more potential for this side, but obviously, you know, visa issues, COVID stuff. You guys have just been plagued with it for the past year. Pardon? Oh, what's the question? <laughs> See, well, you didn't really ask a question <laughs> at the yeah, end I, of that I, There was, there was <laughs> a lot of excitement. The, the sum up is... Yeah, just basically, how do you guys think you would have done at Charlotte? Because you didn't get the chance to go. Oh yeah, okay, so at Charlotte, uh, I, I think we're gonna do great if we actually made to the Charlotte and you you would have won it. You if, uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because uh, because if we went to a Charlotte, Mark and Punch gonna get the land experience and we make it to the Berlin. I think we're gonna like perform better than this for sure. One of the things I'm kind of curious about. Um, you said in a CGG article about not quite being able to get out to Charlotte was that when you're in that situation, you focus on what's going to come next. You focus on the next meta, the game that you can sort of put, because in your words, the teams that sort of play in those don't have time to get themselves and their heads around a new meta. 
Do you feel like you're suffering on the other end of that? Because so far, you've been quite successful back in APAC South. No, I don't think we're suffering from the meta. Like, uh, we have an analyze and, you know, if some team that using Asami or things, then it's, uh, they're not that good at using a new meta operator. And then we just ban, like, target ban some Yana or Finca or something like that we usually do. I think that's what everyone thought they were going to do against Elevate, right? Because you used to play Finca an awful lot. It was one of your go-to operators. And then you've just gone, right, here's the actual meta over there that everyone's playing. And here's the meta over here that Onigiri is playing, which has just been Mark 14s the whole way through. I said to Flute, we were sat down doing a little bit of prep before. And I said, I guarantee you, all that he's <laughs> playing now is the KB and Aruni. Look at your stats for this stage. It's all the KB and Aruni because they've both got Mark 14s. Whenever, whenever you drop a kill record with them, you know, can, can yeah. you blame them? I mean, there's a real beauty because obviously the Mark 14 is largely unaffected by the recoil, recoil changes that basically every other gun has now had because of the recent patch. Is that why you stuck to playing it and not tried to play other operators? Is it because you think the Mark 14 is so good? Like, why is that your go-to weapon no matter what the rest of the meta is doing? I mean, it's not my go-to weapon, but I um, rely on a DMR because uh, I feel like, you know, imagine when you're in the game and you get getting hit by a DMRs and the sound of the gun <laughs> is destroy your mentality. That, that's what I think. Like, in Are you head. saying to me you're just playing it to tilt the opposition? When they hear that going, they're just like, oh, I want to get yeah. it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. oh, my God. Like, oh, I'm getting hit by a DMRs again. Something like that. Have you been tilted? Um, no, I don't get tilted. <laughs> he hasn't been banged uh, off the map by Onigiri for I mean, like yeah. six rounds to in a row. To be fair, Onigiri, how does it feel whenever, if you were to get killed by the DMR, how, how, how does that make you feel? Do you feel, oh, God, what's happened to him? I've been killed by my own weapon. Uh, like, I'm just bad by the time if I got killed by my own weapon. <laughs> is, there, is there pressure that a gun has now become known for you? Yeah, like, if people say Mark yeah. 14, they think of Onigiri. Right? Yeah, yeah, the same way if people think Shaiko, of Monty. Shaiko R R4C, for Shaiko example. Shaiko R4C, yeah. Monty and Pengu. You'll sort of have these operators and these combinations. Mm -hmm. Now that you're Corey one of Nades. these sort of... Stop, stop. Does that add a level of pressure? Sometimes, because like in FXR, like this stage three, uh, they ban my Aluni a lot. A lot. <laughs> like I, I have to find something new on, on my defense. What What have you been playing instead when it has been banned away? <laughs> uh, I mean, if Aluni get banned, I'm gonna go for Thorn because of her guns. You know, it hits very hard, like 43 damage or something. Yeah. Let's nice. talk. Let's talk more up-to-date things. Let's talk more recent meta, because we haven't seen much of them at all from our perspective. What are your thoughts on Grim from a professional player? Grim? Yeah. <laughs> Why haven't we seen uh, much of to, Grim? To be honest, I haven't touched Grim since it's on the official server. Like, I never touched Grim because everyone on my team says it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he is very clunky. That's the best way I put it. I think if you look at the gadget, you kind of have to like take it out like Sophia or like Ash. So whenever you have it out in your hand, someone can swing you like really, really easily, which I think is a bit of an issue. And two, actually trying to like land the gadget in this in the place you want to, especially if there's like stuff in front of you, it can actually be quite difficult. So it's not like the easiest of operators that you can use at like a moment's notice because you know, Sophia has like that full radius where you just fire it and no problems at all. Um, it's, you, you have to be really specific and if you miss it, it's just, it's going to be horrible. Yeah. You said uh, as well, to go back to your previous interviews, that one of the things that your team struggled with on the side of defense was against rushes that are sort of coming uh, against you. That was something that you sort of highlighted as a weakness. Has that been something that you felt is better with the new meta? Now LMGs are sort of on a bit of a back foot. Yeah, I, I feel like mm, the the MG Balan is pretty good now. And, you know, there's no, like, two two guys on the other team running an LMG and <laughs> swing you out in other side. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, the switch is good right now for me. And I, I hope that they won buff and LMG back. It's only because no one can control the recoil. And he's yes. just like, Mark 14, what <laughs> recoil? <It's karma. laughs> and you can throw their mental with a single operator. And also, Dokubi's gotten a lot better as well. As. So it, like, oh, it, it even EMP fits them better with the I EMP guess. grenades and the Gon yeah, 6 yeah. you have now. So yeah. How about, yeah, pocket EMPs. Have that's, has that been a sort of big thing for your team or is that a work in progress? Uh, it's a big change for our team. You know, like, since we know that there's an impact EMP that's going to be on the official server, we... 
practice on a <coughs> test server and we trying out like what's the best use of this gadget and uh, we don't have to be worried about getting banned tasher and I can run an a, I mean a dokevi and using an EMP with a Thorn 6 and I can clear the enemy team gadget by myself. Yeah, gives you a little bit more of that sort of drive. Let's talk competition. Let's talk it, because obviously there was a change where it's now two by two. The top two teams from Apex South and Apex North are the ones that head. How has that changed the competition for you, focusing now on league play instead? Two teams from Apex South are able to get through. Has that changed how your team approaches the league? Has it made things, in your perspective, easier or tougher? Uh, I feel like it's easier and there will be less drama because, you know, in fact, not player is not... <laughs> used to the ping like 100, 100 ping I yeah mean, I, I don't have any problem with the ping and i mean yeah it's easier for me and yeah it's easier <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and i guess speaking of competition um apat south like you guys have been top dog now for a long long time right like outside of in stage one finishing second to dire walls who had that freak seven zero stage we've seen different teams sort of rise and fall but you guys have always been at the top What's your current take on other teams in APAC South? Because in the Rogue Masters the other day, obviously you guys didn't give Lax in the right time, so he wasn't awake to support you through that best of three. <laughs> um, but what's your take on other teams at the minute in APAC South? Do you still feel you are the best or are the other rivals starting to rise up and now challenge you? Mm, I feel like there are some rivals that are starting to like improve. Like For example, Fury, mm. as you can see on uh, the OPL this league yeah and they're improving a lot and you know i i think it's gonna be a hard time for us if we fight against them but i'm pretty confident we have lasting in our team and he's not sleeping by the game day <laughs> what about uh gaming gladiators obviously they were able to make a recent run they were with you in berlin do you think that was a sort of flash in the pan like a single incident or are they another team on the rise uh yeah they are another team on the rise too because you know they just signed titan s analyzed uh, I, I don't know that I'm allowed to say this, <laughs> if, but if, you know, if it's not in the podcast, an... when you watch it back, you're not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like when when our coach retired, we has we we had a talk with Titan, and he's a great coach. You know his mentality, everything. We love Titan. I yeah. think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Gladiator is gonna improve a lot, and it's gonna be a hot match against Fury and Gaiman, yeah. yeah. Love it. Because, I mean, GG, they, they played okay, I think, at, at the Major. And think about what they're going to be like now with another extra few months plus time. Yeah. yeah. Sure, it has to get... There's no way it does not get better. That's the way. No, absolutely. Um, and I guess this kind of comes on to an interesting point about Laxin, right? Like, <laughs> it's kind of annoying for you guys in so a way. The weirdest oh change I think I've, I've seen in the past five years... Huh? It, the most weird change oh, I've yeah. ever seen in the an past NA, five years. An it's player. so weird. It's an, like getting a new dad with waxing. Yeah, yeah, like an NA player steps down and then goes and coaches an APAC South team. Like, it's such a bizarre jump. And obviously for you guys, a lot of focus goes on to that because Laxing is such a well-known name. And it's not to try and make it all about him, but how have you guys found working within the last few weeks? Has it really helped you level up? Is it kind of he's more helping reinforce the fundamentals that you already knew? What new ideas has he brought to the team so far? So, uh, yeah, he brought a lot of, like, a new vision of how we play the game, you know, like something that we cannot think of, like the way to push this side or that side or how to defend this. And when we're making a strat, he always uh, give an advice for, like, oh, if you're going to raise the enemy utility, you're going to need... You need to add this operator or remove this one, something like that. Yeah, he, he, he gave us a lot of new vision of how to play the game like he's from his eight year experience or something yeah. i assume you're all teaching him things as well it's a <laughs> two-way street because obviously it's a very different angle of things in na they've been struggling they've a little a little they had the viper competitive stage the major wasn't super hot and now uh this stage looks to be a bit chaotic because oxygen aren't doing very well without him i guess mm. this is the question is this finally the year of apac onagiri can you answer <laughs> this are you going to win a major <laughs> I'll try my best. I mean, I got a good, I got a good feeling about having Lexing walking behind us at the land event. Like, like you know, uh, I have to say that, like at the Berlin major, <clears throat> uh, we might have win against the View Seven M if I if I call a timeout. But 
you know, <clears throat> I, uh, I lost my focus and I just focused on the game and, you know, the coach didn't call the timeout also. Mm. So I, I feel great that we have a lasting behind us and to back us off, you know, the, like, the Apex out against... Was it tied? What's the day? previous match? Yeah, against tied, yeah. Yeah, like, out, yeah. I didn't expect him to call a timeout. <laughs> I worked. Like, I, I, I see. I see a timeout. Yeah, I see a timeout call for a little bit. I, I'm talking in time with my team. Like, wait, did the spectator like uh, press the wrong team timeout? It's supposed to be tight, not not our team. <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> after the match, and he said that the reason that I called a timeout because uh, you need to <clears throat> finish the round perfectly, and yeah. He really helped us a lot. Yeah, he tweeted about this, right? He said, you know, I didn't call it because there was anything going wrong or that we had to change something massive. It was just to remind the boys, okay, last round is behind you. Now we focus on this one. We win it here. We don't let the game slip. And that's a little bit different because most coaches step in and call a timeout when they can see communication is breaking down or something in a strat is going horribly wrong and they've got to change something for the future rounds. Did it kind of feel weird to you when he called in that timeout or did you find it valuable? I guess is also a good question. Uh, it's weird for me at at the first time, but yeah. After I rewatched the game and uh, <clears throat> like listen to my teammate things, I mean it's a good timeout because some of our teammate like lost their focus and he really bring us back the focus and yeah, thanks to him that we have him. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's why coaches are going at the moment. I think we're actually seeing a lot more of the kind of mental timeouts rather than yeah. you said strats. There's it's more yeah, about yeah. guys. Calm down, take a breather, and then go. So it's like, that's the way I think it's kind of going, it, isn't it? Yeah, because the meta is so dynamic these days that really having super fixed static strats doesn't really work yeah, anymore. Because yeah. the player, the players over the most for the most part can figure out the problems themselves and ways to attack it. Like you say, mm. it's if communication's coming down, if energy isn't there, those are the core things that make the rest of it fit together. So without that, what are you going to do? And that's why a coach can be so valuable. I think. Yeah. You've been around a while. <laughs> Super on a gear. You've been around playing roughly <laughs> since about 2018. I guess I'm going to open things up and get a little bit more of a perspective of you as a player. As you as a player, is there a game that you still remember, whether you played fantastically in it or one that you still sort of go, this was me at my best? I have an idea. SI22 kill record. <laughs> it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be that match for, <laughs> for sure. Like. <laughs> I, I, like every time that I have a burnout or like uh, I'm, I'm not doing so good in the regional league, I always rewatch that video, all your casting and things that, uh, you know, when you're calling out my names and things that, uh, yeah, that, that gives me a positive power and energy when I have a burnout. Yeah. I love that. I love that. One question I have kind of got is more pulling back towards Berlin itself. Like you mentioned the game earlier on um, with W7M the crowd were going nuts for you guys. Like for you, you obviously missed out on Charlotte. Like we said, you guys couldn't get there. There hasn't really been a big land where you've had that big crowd in front of you as well. What was it like for the team, I guess, in the moment, but also the motivation it's given you afterwards to know that you did have a whole European crowd behind you guys and really trying to egg you on to win? Like it's the best experience for like in my life and it's the best experience for the two new players for sure. I mean, even the, like, I, I can hear the crowd chanting my name through the, like, noise, <laughs> noise canceling headphone. Yeah, I can hear that only Geary things, and yeah, it's the best experience in my life. <laughs> I'm really glad. Um, and as a follow-on, we saw Justin in the crowd a lot, yeah. and arguably, he was the, no as you'd expect, he's a little bit biased. He was the noisiest Elevate supporter I think I saw. What's it like working with Justin? Because he seems like a really nice guy from what I've seen of him in the crowd, from what he's like on Twitter. He seems really, really supportive of you guys and trying to get you to be essentially major champions one day. Uh, Justin is lovely. Like, uh, I don't have a word to describe him. Like, he's a best CEO that you can work with. You know, like, he bought out a snack from the USA and he carried a, like, seven set of gaming gear from Logitech across the world to us and Bless. like he, he treated us every meal at the Berlin <laughs> uh, yeah I have to say thank you to him mm -hmm. like he's the best year was it nicer than the meals you had with Dev on your holiday 
Yeah, you and Dev Mara get up to some weird <laughs> stuff. I, we all saw the steak and ketchup. <coughs> steak and ketchup. Who had steak and ketchup? Uh, just, that's just for the meme. <laughs> that, that's just, just for the yeah, meme. Yeah. I don't right, need okay. yeah. Laxing wouldn't let that stand. I'll say that. <laughs> no. Do you Dev Mart asked me, oh, do you want to come meet me in Onigiri in Dublin? And I'm like, yeah. well, that's like they two hours away, day. so no. You had a wonderful <laughs> European holiday. Yeah, no, coming over to, to my gaff. What's that all about? <laughs> Not my gaff, but your, your gaff. <laughs> do you think amongst this mess, for a long time as a roster, you were described as terrifying to play against because you had a bit of a chaotic atmosphere. Now that the rest of the game has sort of caught up with you, do you feel calmer amongst something that has already sort of been given to you as a title, as being a quite chaotic energy? Uh, yeah, I feel calmer because... Uh, uh, wait, I cannot think of the answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the question that stumps you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, to totally feel calmer because uh, I feel like we improve a lot after the Berlin. Mm. And, like, Punch and Mark got the experience or that I mean, their land experience and do great and maybe improving at the next major. I'm very excited to see how the next major goes for you guys. It feels like around the world, there are a lot of teams really starting to level up. And I'm not saying like Laxon is going to be the factor that gets you guys there, but you had two new players who have had their first experience. The whole team has now been in front of a crowd cheering them on. And you know that's going to massively motivate you guys going into the next major, assuming, of course, you qualify, which at this point, it looks like you will. Um, what are the big things that you think you learned from Berlin? The main takeaways, the things that you realize in the team, we need to get better at this if we are going to go and win everything. Uh, the thing that we learn is don't choke the man advantage as always. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's an APAC special because Sandbox are very good uh, at this as well. Yeah, we always choke on the man advantage and some round at, like, against the seven name on border. Like, I rewatched the game and like... Damn it, if we reset our mindset or focus, we should have fun against the BSM and them. Yeah, <laughs> it was a real kicker because obviously it went 8-6 on that last map as well, right? It was so close. Yeah. Like you could have beat who I think coming into the overall major, many thought were the favourites, right? W7 and favourites. They were for a lot of people. They, they I, I did not say, not not I said for many people and they were the favourites for many people given how well they performed during stage play. Not buying it. Your favourites were G2. My favourites were FaZe. His favourites still are G2. <laughs> Don't want to rest all. He'll jump in the time machine and go back and alter the record. G2 did it, Des. <laughs> Get a laser pen and just shine it in Leon's eyes. Just change that last round a little bit. No comment. <laughs> if you had a chance to talk to any R6 pro, past or present, for an hour, just about everything to do with the game, pick all of their brains and their knowledge, who would it be that you'd want to have the proper in depth conversation with? Oh, okay. Hmm. That's a real thinking question. Yeah, hmm. that's a good question. Like, um, maybe a Fabian, maybe? Fabian. Oh, or maybe Pengu, yeah. Fabian or Pengu. What, what would, what would yeah. you try and get from them? Uh, I'm going to ask some stupid question, like, how to win an S A S I? How to win an SI? <laughs> I mean, they might, if anyone has the answer. I already, know, I already know Fabian's answer. Yeah, what? Don't suck. Yeah. That's, mm. that's exactly what I'd say. <laughs> No, he is. He's, he's definitely, he would love the conversation, I know. because And he, he don't loves, troll map bands. He loves the sound of his own voice. That also is Bobby. true. He's very much. Do you, who, do you, who do you have the conversation with? Me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see you stumped Demo now. <laughs> Honestly, just because I've never heard him speak before, Shaiko. Just I need to know what he sounds like. <laughs> he I still don't know. English. Don't, don't matter. Just want to hear what he sounds like. If he like. could speak French, he'd if he choose speak, Shaiko. Yeah, if yeah. he could speak French. Mm. Me? You're not allowed to say mm. Tim. No, <laughs> former pro player Tim, yeah. <laughs> No, I think honestly, like although I've already spoke to him a lot, it'd probably be Pengu. I think when we actually had him out for the Sweden major in November, we just sit down and talk about the game in general and the philosophy and like his approach to it is really interesting. So just being able to pick someone's brains like that is really cool. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of depth. Mm. It gives you a little bit of an and idea. you on a geary, which is this <laughs> is really <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> perfectly come together. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I know. It's the sort of drive that we can have. Do you think consistency is a bit of a problem in the game itself at the minute? I think what we're looking at from the other teams that did very well in Berlin, FaZe are the only ones that have found themselves in the top four. W7M, Xset and Rogue have all struggled. Is it a consistency thing, do you think? Or is it that, as you said before, and as I quoted, they were last in the major, so they've had the less time to get ready? 
No, I, I think like it's more like about mentality, like, you know, that role player come out and tweet that uh, we don't really focus on a scrims or strats rise and we just focus on player mentality. And I, I saw that they bring a like psychologist mm. at the Bernie, Bernie yeah, major. The performance yeah. coach, yeah, psychologist. Yeah, I feel like that's more important because, you know, when your player get a burnout and it's, it's just, it's just, you cannot, you cannot like, uh, you cannot fix that burnout easily, you know. Uh, so I think like if we focus on mentality of the player, like the living a life or balancing out the screams and living a life, I, I think uh, we're gonna, every team gonna win a a major or SI. <laughs> Imagine. Well, I guess that will set us up for a final sort of question and a final sort of point. What is the goals of Super Onigiri throughout the rest of this year? What do you want to achieve before we find ourselves into the next? Uh, my goals is to win a major or to win the SI. Because like my first goal was like just to make it to the SI. And I, I make it and I have to set my goals higher than make it to the SI. Yeah, and that's like the whole team goes too because the I mean it's it has to be every team goes to win the SI or the major. Yeah, if you don't aim for the top, then you'll miss. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been wonderful to have this conversation. Wonderful to have you both. I'm sure Laxing will have you doing lap and press ups and weight curls and he's missed 30 minutes of scrims for this <laughs> yeah he missed 30 minutes of scrims he's going to be furious with us but thank you so much any final words to any of the fans the Adelaide fans listening uh, uh, yeah thank you everyone thank you Dennis. thank you uh, Fluke Democast for inviting me to this interview and thank you every Elevate fans for your support I'll try my best to make it to the major and win the events well you know you've got a lot of supporters <laughs> over here in this region None more so than on this table. Thank you so much, and thank you, everybody, for listening. Any parting words from you two? Uh, good luck. Yeah? Laters. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>